40,000 is exactly the same. So uh, we have to be very careful that we can deliver. I mean, we, I can't even say there, that console that's out, Ouya. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just saw that they had a, a press, or had to do a press release because, you know, the units made it to the store before it made it to all the pre-sale oh, no. folks, which is unfortunate. I mean, yeah. but I can... I can totally understand their their dilemma there. It's it's hard going um, to these contract manufacturers and like any one little thing. It could be like one screw is not available, and you're just sitting there waiting for these screws to become available. Um, so anyway, our Kickstarter, uh, we have to make sure that we're going to hit our price point and we can manufacture it. And I'm I've been. I've been to the rodeo a bunch of times. I know <laughs> how to do this. So, um, uh, are you thinking this year? Like, I guess. You yeah. Think this year. Yeah, I okay. Think this year. So I'm thinking. Um, our thought is sometime after September or near September, let everyone get back in school with the summer vacationers. You know, hopefully we'll right have... before everyone spends all their money for Xbox and PS4. You've got to get in that window oh, before yeah. the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or, you know, maybe Xbox will step in and just acquire us. Right? Uh, yes. I'll throw that out I there. would not be surprised. Um, we're not opposed to that either. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm excited. Uh, it'd be nice if it's a peripheral on all the consoles. Um, we have a, a few things to figure out there. One of our issues that we have right now is how do we um, film it in such a way that people get that wow experience? Like 100% of the people that put it on, the first thing they say is wow, because it really looks like there's something on the table there. But you put a, a camera through just one of the, uh, <clears throat> through one of the, the eyes of the glasses, mm -hmm. and it just kind of looks flat. It looks like you're just filming a, an LCD monitor or something. So we have to do some thinking about how do we honestly um, represent that. We want to be we want to be completely honest. We don't want at the end of the day anyone to be like, well, you showed a picture of this, but we actually got that. And okay, authenticity. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. and we um, one of our big pushes is up to this point, all of our game experiences have just been experiences and not real full fledged type games. We want to show show <clears throat> show the games that we're going to ship with it at least a level or something of it. So it's like this is what you're going to get with it, instead of a bunch of block smashing demos that entertains you for five minutes, that there's going to be something that you're going to want to sit around with your friends. So that's going to take a little while. And you know, that's another thing I learned from Valve. Valve, Valve time, there's a lot of reasons there's Valve time. Um, part of it's chaos around there, and part of it is they really think about the customer. And um, you want to make sure that we we keep that methodology of the stuff that we're doing that we're going to make sure that the game experiences that we promise are deliverable and going to be fun and, and keep that if, if it means it's not going to be this year it's just not going to be this year but anyway blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> question time from the chat room okay some of these i don't understand but i'm asking them pico projectors get really expensive when you move to higher resolution what are you aiming at with version 1.0 from bob kittens Hey, Bobcat. I know Bob Kitten. Um, so the current prototypes that we're showing, well, resolution is one of those interesting things that I should explain. Um, it's not necessarily the projector's resolution is what you get. Um, since we track your head position, let's say it's 800 by 600 now, um, which actually is 640, right now on the, the demos that we're showing. But um, it's 640, but you move your head a, an inch or two to the side. Now you get a new 640 by 480. Mm. So we have an aspherical lens that focuses most of the um, density of the, the pixels kind of dead center where your eye is the most sensitive and they fall off and they kind of warp out and gives you super high detail right where you're looking. So you have super high detail no matter where you look around the surface. Um, so right now um, we're under NDA with all the display manufacturers. There's stuff that's scheduled for next year, exactly when we're going to do um, our production run, like if everything goes well. Um, so those are, are going to be 720p-ish uh, resolutions. I can't tell you the exact resolutions because it's private information. But um, our next res uh, rev of the glasses, this uh, it's going to be 950-something by 5 
60, I forget the exact panel size, but uh, we, our next revision of the 90 gram lightweight glasses are going to be higher resolution by a lot. Hmm. And actually the panel size is going down in size. So I, I can talk about how the uh, panels work. These are pretty slick. I didn't understand anything about optics or these panels until I started this project. I had to learn it from the ground up because we couldn't hire anyone to, uh, to oh. do this for us. Yes. Okay. You know, yeah, tell me. Um, so it's a piece of silicon, and on the silicon are the pixels. They've been patterned, so all the transistors and control circuitry is on the silicon. And silicon's shiny, and they apply some surface to make it more mirror-like. And then they take a liquid crystal and they put it under a glass cover. So these liquid crystals can be influenced by an electric field. So these little miniature um, transistors are turning on these little tiny pixels. And so you can have a panel that's only a quarter inch tall and it can be full HD resolution just because they're using super miniature transistors in this reflective surface. So you shine light on it and you put some polarizers and some other things in there and then it projects out the lens. And so that's how we can, I think it's 18 grams is what we got the projector down to or somewhere around there. It's, it's super, super light. Uh, we threw away all the glass in it. And so you just have these two little projectors that are sitting kind of across the brow. You, when you look at someone that's looking at the surface, it kind of have these little demon eyes. <laughs> What's is funny is um, uh, on our current prototypes, we don't do anything to look to see if you're looking at another user, which we can totally do. And, we could turn the LEDs off, but since the um, light is coming out of these projectors and it's hitting this retroreflector, which is sending 90% of the light back to your eyes, you don't have to project much. They're just very dimly projecting out, but it looks like a super bright image to you. So when you look up at someone, you see these kind of white lights glowing at you. And one of our friends said, like, like yeah, don't worry, we're going to fix that. So when you look at someone, it shuts off the LEDs. And she's like, yeah, but make sure there's a button on the wand that I can push and it makes a red pew-pew eyes. Um, oh, neat. Yeah, we can totally do that. <laughs> so, who knows? Maybe there's some gameplay around uh, just looking at each other. And... That's right, mood LEDs. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Busiris 5000 asks, any interest in getting into nanotech, 3D printers, or carbon nanotube manufacturing? So, I've looked into carbon nanotube stuff. It's it's pretty interesting. You can uh, make carbon nanotubes just with a candle. And so I have an electron microscope in my garage, and I just got that going in the last year. <laughs> I have an electron microscope in my garage. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually, I've looked at some uh, soot that, so if you soot up a like, glass slide with a um, candle, it's just chuck full of carbon nanotubes. So I have put it in my electron microscope and looked at um, carbon nanotube-like structures. I don't know if I've actually identified them yet. Carbon nanotubes, the reason that he's asking this, or she, is that um, they, they have this electron transport uh, mechanism. The way they work is it's ballistic instead of through electron hole pair stuff, like regular transistors, blah, 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 tech um, mumbo jumbo. But it's, it's um, potentially a way that you can make transistors that are way faster than uh, what they're making right now. They're not limited, on, uh, limited by semiconductor... Um, physics with all these whole pair electron combination stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm going to butcher this. Jorge Carbajal1 asks, what happened with the rest of the team who worked with you at Valve? Weren't they interested in keeping, in working with you guys now, like on this project, I guess? Uh, I'm still really friendly with the folks there. They were all my friends. We, um, the ones that I was, wasn't friends with before, we became friends. Um, heart goes out to them. I mean, understand frustrations they must be going through. I hope it changes. It probably is completely different for them now. They probably have their machinists. They probably well underway. They brought in maracas something. instead. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, it was such a disappointment. Um, it was so sad that day. I mean, everyone was tearing up. Um, yeah, I, I heard that um, people weren't even consulted in our group about it. It was just like some external folks, like, uh, let's just gather up all the undesirables and get rid of them. Do you think they were absorbed into other companies pretty quick? Uh, yeah, oh, oh, uh, the folks that were also laid off at the same time, I've been in touch with them, too. We, like, kind of close-knit that way, too. We had this one bonding thing. Uh, yeah, a lot of folks got um, grabbed up by other companies. Uh, 
some of them have been helping us, so that's that's hmm. very cool. Uh, so Rick and I formed this company, and we've been getting help from various folks that um, were also laid off, so they have some time. Nice. Yeah. Ironface077 asks, are the glasses pulling power from the I.O. port, or are you going to be running it separate? We want to run the power separate, um, although we're not using a lot of power because of the um, surface that's so efficient. Uh, it's already difficult for cell phones and tablets to run games like for a long time. So one of the things that we're working on now is like how do we power it? Do we have a battery clip that plugs onto it and you put your rechargeable batteries into it and you, that runs the glasses? It's something we're looking into. Um, you know, maybe the starter kit will just have a wall wart that you plug in. So it's, there's a few little things that we're not clear, um, but we do know if it's going to be hooked to a phone, we don't want to also be dragging down the phone with the, the glasses. D. Mackey 828 insists that I ask this question. Will, you be, will I be able to use this on my Commodore 64, Jerry? We've been joking about, since we're building an ASIC for it, this custom chip for it, that we should put a full C64 in it, since uh, that's kind of what I'm known for. <laughs> right. um, I, yeah, well, I guess I'll say it. I, I have a 6502 in, the, in there right now that we're using, which is the processor that the C64 used. <laughs> so much. Yeah. But more, more of I had it from the old C64 project, and it's like, I know how to program it, so I'm going to put it in. <laughs> and it's small and low power. Nice. Malapropos has a good question. Can people with glasses use Cast AR without a hassle? Oh, they can. That was one of our main criteria, trying to come up with a way to do um, the system. Is we, we designed the frames that are wide enough that um, people most normal size glasses will fit underneath and there's really not much in front of your eyes that so um, we envision it to come with a couple little rubber nose pieces that you can change out so hmm. you know if you're just wearing it normal it's going to be farther back on your face and um, well you have a different nose piece but if you have glasses it can sit a little farther out uh, another thing that we observed right now when we took it to um, Maker Fair we put these little straps are the ones that you tighten up to cinch it down on the back. You know, goes from arm to okay. arm. Okay. I don't know what those are called. Lan lanyards or something like that. But we put um, one of those on there because we were worried that it would fall off of kids' faces. And we found that that was really, um, really, really good for kids. Uh, we were concerned that maybe we wouldn't be able to sell these and kids wouldn't be able to use them because their faces were so small. But by having that, that helped. And we think that would also help people have glasses if they have to have them pushed out on their nose a little bit more. And of course, they're so light that it's not going to be, shouldn't hurt the end of your nose. So um, you wear them for 18 hours while you gain consistently. Oh boy. <laughs> you better get the wall ward attachment for the uh, power pack on that one <laughs> and for your phone. Yes. Okay, I guess we're getting close to um, wrapping up. One last question here. Um, from Thorngrim, are you going to have a dev kit available for developers to build specifically for your glasses? So that's some, some things that we've been talking about a lot is if we do a Kickstarter, um, what comes first? Is it, is it a clunkier dev kit, um, which we're thinking yes, so maybe you get that end months after, um, after Kickstarter and then the final production ones will be some amount of time afterwards. Uh, we're concerned that uh, doing that might distract us from production so it's yeah there's a lot of trade-offs on that. We really do want to do a dev kit and we think it's important. Um, yeah. okay. No real solid answer on that yet but most likely. Okay. We're getting close to closing. Is there anything else you wanted to say you didn't get a chance to? Oh, I probably said too much already. <laughs> never, <laughs> never. All right. Thank you to Jerry Ellsworth. You can find on Thank Twitter you. at Jerry Ellsworth. Anywhere else you want people to find you other than Twitter Jerry Ellsworth? That's pretty good. Um, our website is uh, www.technicalillusions.com. Okay. Um, if you do a search for cast AR, um, it was funny. Uh, a quick, like, if you have time, I'll tell you about the yeah, story of the name. I wanted so, to know that. Yeah, so the name of our company, we figured that out in a couple days, which was stressful. 
And we're like, technical illusions. Yeah, that's kind of cool. and doesn't matter what the name is.